Um, we are here today, this morning. I'm Jessica Rogers with Casey AC. I want to introduce, slide a little closer. This is Kali Brock. Uh, we're so excited. She is our new membership director at Kansas City Artist Coalition. And so she will be taking over Coffee Talk in the coming months. So I just wanted you guys to put a name to a face and um, meet her. Um, also, if you ever have ideas or input for Coffee Talk, we'll want you to um, reach out to her and share your ideas or like if you ever want to guide one or if you have an idea for a community partner that might be good to guide one, just please always feel free to um, share those ideas with us. Um, I'll put their um, email in the chat box towards the end of the session. And um, today we are talking with Cheryl Pemberton from the Min Mid Continental Public Library Systems, which I'm learning is different than different library systems, which is very exciting. And she's talking to us specifically about the Access Art Program and um, their need for teaching artists and kind of what those opportunities that they have are. And she's here to share that with us. Um, it'll be a casual conversation today. So feel free to unmute yourself as we're speaking and um, ask questions. You don't have to do it in the chat box. You can just kind of insert yourself and um, ask questions as we go along. And then um, we'll do a little, you know, we can share any things we have going on at the end and um, just go from there. So I'm going to hold KCAC stuff till the end and we can kind of just go ahead and start um, with Access Art now if that works for everybody. Okay. Um, ready to go? Okay. Go for it. My name is Cheryl Pemberton. I'm with the Mid-Continent Public Library. I'm a community programming specialist. I'm going to tell you a little bit about Mid-Continent. We are a library system with 32 branches. We're all, uh, all of Platte County, all of Clay County, and Jackson County outside of the Kansas City, Missouri School District. So if you're in the Kansas City, Missouri School District, you're in the uh, Kansas City Public Library System. Um, our branches are kind of inner suburbs all the way out to rural areas like Lone Jack and Dearborn and um, Excelsior Springs. Uh, so we, you know, we have a, a different, all kinds of varieties of, of communities that we serve. My department is in charge of uh, programs at the libraries, which have uh, totally been virtual for the past almost two years, but we are starting uh, in 2022 to go back to face-to-face -face programming, which we're really excited about. Uh, Access Art, uh, prior to the pandemic, was a one-day all ages, all day long event of hands-on art instruction. Uh, we probably had, you know, 15, 15 different art classes going uh, one day that was held at our Woodneath Library Center. We expanded that to, uh, and after a couple of years, to our North Independence Library. And, you know, it was for all ages. We had kids programs, toddlers, preschoolers, school age, teen, and adult. That kind of came to a screeching halt in 2020, and we transitioned to a virtual access art. The first year was probably in April of 2020, and we really kind of were getting used to virtual programming. Didn't go so well. We did 2021. We were much better at it. We had a combination of pre-recorded art instruction and Zoom classes. Starting in 2022, we're gonna go back to face-to-face -to -face classes. And rather than do an all day at one branch, we're going, it's going to be a year long activity, uh, uh, you know, year long activities that are branded as Access Art. And they will be strictly for adults. And they we're, we're gonna try and spread them out over our library system. So, you know, I'm gonna put something in the chat. Um, I don't know if I've got, Okay, this is, this is one thing I'll talk about. Let me find the, uh, our link to our library system. Okay, uh, this link has a, uh, it's just our to our website. It describes all the 32 branches and we, and it gives all the locations. And we kind of want to spread them out so that we're not, you know, just in Jackson County. So we kind of want to hit the Northland and the Southland. More than likely, we will stay at uh, the larger suburban branches uh, just because that's, uh, you know, uh, they're pretty successful there. And we're open to any type of, uh, 
any type of medium. We've done jewelry making, we've done you know, pen and ink drawing, charcoal drawing, cartooning, um, watercolor and acrylic painting were very popular. We haven't done a whole lot of sculpture. We did it with kids, but we've not done any sculpture with adults, but I, you know, it would be nice to incorporate something new. Fiber art was always very popular. So we're really open to anything, just kind of whatever your skill sets are and what you'd like to share with our library customers. We uh, use a software system called Submittable, which I put the link in the chat to Submittable. And that has, you know, basically everything that we need to get a program on board. It asks for, you know, the title of the program, a brief description for marketing purposes that goes in our uh, promotional materials, a, a brief outline of the program, how, how you think you'd structure the class, the length of the program, the fee, the target audience, you know, uh, this is, in this, in this case, we are strictly looking for adults. So the target audience is, is pretty, pretty standard. Um, it'll ask for a couple of references um, if people who've, you know, observed your work or your teaching style, if you've, if you've taught before. Mid-continent, we do have a budget for the program. We also have a budget for materials. So in this particular um, case, we are, uh, uh, did you have a budget to pay for materials if you just give us basically a shopping list within reason? Um, you know, we, we can't go crazy, but we do have a budget. And we're going to start in April. I've got an April and May class lined up, but, you know, it probably June, June and afterwards, we will be, you know, starting more, you know, looking for more classes to schedule. Uh, if we, if we are accepting a class, we would do two, at least two classes, one North, one South, and uh, we, you know, kind of schedule it, you know, at a mutually agreeable time. Most of our branches, um, uh, our classes can can run longer than our typical, you know, adult lecture classes. So we might do a Saturday because it, it, we have a little bit more flexibility with time. If we did a weeknight, it would be uh, we, it, we usually don't start till six thirty or seven, and we have a hard out at nine when the branches close. So it might be cutting it close depending upon the class to do it on a weeknight, but. That's Access Art. It's a year-long series of programs uh, branded as Access Art. We're open to any medium. And I, if you love to answer questions, if you have any questions. <laughs> I have a bunch of questions. Okay. Um, okay. I, um, so you said that, um, okay, through Submittable, you can submit kind of the brief description and everything about the workshop and whatnot. Um, and a supply list, which is incredible because, you know, I've taught a bunch of different things like this and people never provide the materials. So that's really wonderful. This is the first time we've done that. Yeah. Uh, I think that really helps the artist um, a lot. Um, when it comes to budget and paying the artist, is the fee the same across the board or does it depend on what you're teaching? It depends. Yeah, it depends. And, and it's it's really, we ask you to submit the fee because you know what the value of your time is. Mm -hmm. We may or may not, you know, we may negotiate a little bit, but, you know, we, it's, it's, I think it's a pretty fair rate that we usually offer. But you, you, you set the fee that you want, you know, you'd like to receive. And the fee, um, that is payment to the artist. Do we, um, do we, do you guys charge the people attending the workshops or is that all no. funded? That's free for the public? No. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we provide the materials for the public. We, we, we limit it to, you know, 12 to 15 people, uh, but no, we don't, we, we don't charge our library customers anything for attending. That's wonderful. And um, say that you wanted to propose like a series of workshops, are you guys open to something like that where it'd be like once a month? that you'd come back and teach, or are you looking for just one-off kind of experiences? Well, when I say series, it's, it's a, activities that are branded as access art. So we, we might have a, a painting workshop in June and a, a jewelry making in July and fiber art in August, and, you know, just something different, uh, you know, series that just that they're branded as access art, and that's just not necessarily a three-part program. Programs that are multiple part, don't always do as well as a, you know, one and done class. We, we tend to lose people, you know, when the longer the class is, I mean, the more sessions we tend to lose people at the end. Yeah, I think that's very true. 
Um, and with you mentioning that there would be um, one workshop in the Northland and one out south, um, do those happen back to back typically? How does that work? Uh, not usually, uh, unless the presenter would like to do that and just get it all done in one day, it would involve driving. I mean, that you know, if you, if you have a uh, our boardwalk branches on I-29 and Berry Road and our and, you know, in the, in the afternoon classes at a Blue Springs Early Summit, it may not be feasible. So it's right. more than likely going to be two different Saturdays unless your presenter is, is you know, up for driving, you know, <laughs> a little bit of drive in between. Yeah. And then would the artist fee be for um, both workshops or do they get paid individually for each workshop? Phase? For each workshop. Yeah. Cool. That's great. Um, and the, I'm assuming this is a silly question, but the workshops happen in the library, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, our, each library has a programming space. Mm -hmm. They more than likely do not have a water source, but, you know, it's something that we, we've worked around that before. You know, we just make sure we have, you know, pitchers of waters and, you know, five-gallon buckets. So, you know, if it's something... You know, uh, we've had a lot of people propose dyeing workshops as fiber art, and that probably is not something we could do, but we've, you know, like we've done watercolor and, and you know, other, other programs that, you know, needed a water source that, you know, we would make it work. That's great. Yeah, that was the first, I'm a fiber artist and I dye stuff. And so I was like, oh, a dye workshop. And then I was like, yeah, if it's happening in the library, it's probably not now, realistic. This sounds funny, but all of our branches are in the process of being remodeled. And I would say we're probably 80 to 90% finished with all three, two branches. And I, I just don't think our, our senior management team would be really thrilled if we somehow had an accident with dye on the brand new carpet in our brand new programming spaces. So I, we're trying to, uh, we were up for almost anything but dying. Yeah, no, I, I totally understand that. That's Unless so funny. we could do it, we could, you know, we, if it's depending upon the season, we might be able to do it outside. That's really fun because I can see that being like appealing to like plain air instructors who kind of gather people to do stuff like that and anything, mm -hmm. nature, walk, weavings, or, you know, anything that people have ideas for outside. Some of our branches are more suitable to outside programming. Most of, most of them are pretty right in the middle of the, of the suburbs, you know, with a little sidewalk, there. but uh, a couple of them have a little bit more green space that, that are more, you know, more amenable to a plain air program. That's so cool. And when the artist applies for a workshop proposal, do they get to choose what library their program happens at, or do you guys kind of place? No, okay. no, we 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 choose because uh, we, we try to spread them out so that you know it's not the same branch all the time. So we, we kind of you know mix them up a little bit. We like I said, we probably won't be going too far outside the city limits. So uh, you know, I, I, I I'm, we're not going to send someone to Dearborn or 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 Lone Jack or Oak Grove, you know, which we do have branches in all those locations. Okay, cool. Um, gosh, I had a question that's just pooped right away now. Does anyone else have any questions? Rebecca, Taylor, yeah, sure. go for it. I don't want to bombard. Yeah, no, I've got a couple questions, but I'm happy to space them out um, and riff off the conversation. Uh, first of all, thanks for coming, Cheryl. This is such a fun and exciting opportunity. Thanks for sharing it with all of us. Oh, thank you for um, having me. <laughs> Um, my question is, what have like successful uh, access art classes look like in the past? Like what has been, I guess, maybe the most successful execution of this just to give us some little pointers for when we are looking at doing our submittal? Um, I'd love to hear about that. You know, painting has always been done really well. Um, you know, we, we would always alternate year. Uh, we would do acrylic painting one year and watercolor the next. And they all, those classes always build up pretty quickly. But almost everything was successful. I, uh, I, I think there are, there are a lot of enthusiastic uh, budding artists out there. The drawing classes, we did a drawing uh, portraits, uh, you know, drawing faces. That did really well. Um, we did a drawing landscape ar architecture that went really well. We were getting ready to do a jewelry workshop, which unfortunately that's what the pandemic uh, put the put the kibosh to. And I it was it was uh, getting a lot of sign up. So I, that's a medium I would like to explore more. But we've had some really fun ones. I mean, one was uh, it was a teen workshop, but it had a lot of 
a lot of our teen workshops actually do get a few adults. It was uh, making sculpture out of uh, discarded books, which for a library, you know, that's kind of uh, kind of a natural fit. And it was it was ran by the I believe it was by the Nelson Art Gallery uh, instructors, and uh, it was just I don't know, I just can't, I can't describe it really well, but it was it was a really fun program. And you know what, fiber art is always, you know, we've done um, a lot of weaving on hand looms and weaving on pendant and, oh, what's that called, Full, fulling, is that what it's called with the needle? Yeah, okay, we've done those, and those all, those all, those fill up really quickly. Yeah, I mentioned even maybe like a hand piecing, like a quilting class or something like that might be successful or pattern making, any kind of things. We had a class that got scheduled. It was a, a, a 12 inch like crazy quilt and it, it, but it got canceled. But you know, that's, an, yeah, that was one thing that we were looking at too. Mm -hmm. Printmaking actually had a, a good sign up too. And we, we've done, we did a printmaking class. It was pretty, pretty, you know, we've done a little bit of everything and actually they've all done well. Yeah, I imagine even um, maybe book binding things like that, any mm -hmm. kind of, you know, yeah. Yeah. Just got my, my, yeah, it's turning. <laughs> in, in terms of like, um, the facilitation of the workshops or, or anything like that, I've taught a couple classes before, but I've always, every single artist kind of teaches a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if there was anything that stands out to you about like the six, like the Nelson Adkins, like, um, I know you said it was difficult to describe, but like, I guess the facilitation approach, could you talk a little bit more about what makes a really successful class in that way? Well, um, you know, it, it does help if you had some teaching experience before. I mean, it's, it's one thing to know a subject, but knowing how to teach it is, is uh, kind of a different, different ball game. Um, we always have a mid-continent employee in the in the room they you know they will introduce the program they will assist you know with you know whatever they the artists can can you know need help with they are not artists themselves but you know they're they're there to help you make the program a success we also ask all at the end of the program we have our uh, attendees fill out a survey just because that's just something we do with every program, whether it's an art program or a, a children's entertainer or a, a speaker about, you know, Pendergast, you know, we have, we've got a couple of those coming up too. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Thank you, you're welcome. Let's see. We have a question here in the gallery. Okay. Um, yeah, we have a question here about the length of the workshops. Do you guys have a standard time frame that you like the workshops to last, or is that dictated by the instructor? It is, it, it is kind of up to the instructor. Uh, you will need, um, you know, if we do in the evening, we our breasts, breasts close at nine, so we have to be, you know, cleaned up and ready to go by nine. So that's why we kind of want to do Saturdays. Two hours or two to a half hours would be just about right if you need that much time. If it's if it's a shorter activity, we'd want a minimum of 60 minutes though. I, I, I think it's hard to get anything accomplished in less than 60 minutes, but we could easily go two to uh, two and a half hours. Okay, so somewhere from an hour to two and a half hours is kind yeah. of ideal. I think that's probably best for people's like attention span as well, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. kind of keeping people engaged in the um, activity. That's probably really wise. Yeah. Nice. Does anyone else? I see Lisa Healy, you've joined us. I don't know if you're on here um, currently, but Lisa's exhibited in um, some of the library branches. So she has experience exhibiting as a visual artist in the library branch. So it's um, exciting to me that the libraries are really kind of like reaching out and trying to have more programming for the community and stuff like this. It's really- Oh, great. well, just being back, you know, back in, in the branches now that where things have calmed down a little bit as far as pandemic you know, restrictions. 
Yeah, great. So you've shared the submittable here and um, the overall website for the libraries. Do you have a direct email that people can contact you if yes. they have any um, questions regarding let the me, application? Let me type that in there. And also, let's see. Also, my uh, uh, phone number. Let's see. I, I mean, you know, if someone wants to chat next week, I'd be more than willing to pick up the phone and chat. I love that. I'll share that in our uh, weekly e blast so that people okay. can have access if they weren't able to join this morning. Okay. Um, I know that you have to run, Cheryl, and I want to be respectful of that. You know, okay. Some family plans coming up. So I'm just going to um, share some opportunities that we have going on at KCAC and okay. um, in the community that we know of um now so if you have to go we just really appreciate you joining us this morning for a little while and sharing this opportunity okay for sure. and definitely stay in touch with access art if you have um once these are up and running in april please send them my way and we can okay. send them out to our community um you know okay. to, to sign up and attend and stuff so you guys have good attendance okay thank you all so much for having me i really appreciate you uh inviting okay. me okay Definitely. Take care. Okay, everyone. So I have a few things here I'm going to share. Um, if anyone is out and about today, we have some really exciting um, local artists who are popping up in our gallery. They're actually setting up right now. So if you're doing some holiday shopping or I, you know, like to buy a lot of things for myself during this time of year. Um, if you want to come in, no matter who you're shopping for, um, stop in today to the main gallery at KCAC from 11 to 4. We also have our last pop up happening next Saturday from 11 to 4 on December 18th. But this first little um, link here. This next activity I'm sharing is called the Mobile Museum. This is going to be happening in the gallery um, next Thursday, the 16th, and next Saturday, the 18th. And this is a collaboration of a few artists um, where they're asking guests to bring in an object from their past that they have a narrative with or some kind of memory with and share it like trade it and share their story they're going to be recording people's narratives about those objects and creating kind of this um audio library of stories of objects and i don't know it sounds really interesting it'll be cool it'll be in the gallery um we also have our 39th annual um art auction fundraiser coming up so right now we are looking for artists to donate artwork to the auction um so i have shared the link here for people to submit a piece if you're interested it really helps our organization and keeps us doing all the work that we do um here is this next link it is um we have expanded our studio um offerings and we have a whole new building down the street with 10 more studios available ranging in size from about 120 square feet to like 350 square feet. Um, those will be available January 1. We're doing tours of them for the next couple weeks. Um, so definitely email us if you're interested. And then one last opportunity here for a residency program. That sounds really stellar that you guys might be interested in applying for. Um, I think it's in Vermont. The last time I looked at it, um, or somewhere really beautiful. So definitely apply if you're needing some um, time away to focus on your work. I think it's a three week residency, which sounds like heaven at this point in life. Um, so yeah, does anyone else have anything else you want to talk about or share anything that you're involved in or any topic around town that's hot that you want to discuss? Nope. <laughs> I wish I did, but I I don't think I've got anything. Yeah, same, same, same. Just overwhelmed with holidays, you know. <laughs> All of oh, I do has. have a question for yes. you. Um, yes. I know you had mentioned in another coffee chat where your new studio space is, but could you give me the address again for definitely? I'll put it here. It's two nine 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 Truce Avenue. So it's right on Truce and 30th, basically diagonal from the Ruby Jeans Juicery. It's the big Wonder Lofts building. 
there's some um, restaurants and stuff on the ground floor. So it's a mixed use property and then there's apartments and offices and all kinds of stuff. We're gonna be um, in the basement space there or a portion of the basement space there um, with 10 studios. Awesome, it's thank you. Us. Yeah. Yeah, guys. Um, I I do have one more question since Please. it's such an intimate group. Yeah. I feel more than one. <laughs> have time. Um, I am looking for a studio space, and this is a great opportunity. Your guys' studio space, but is there any like registry where I could find really easily all the studio spaces in Kansas City, or is it just a googling project of searching all of the spaces okay yeah you know this is something that a lot of art organizations have been trying to wrangle for years now specifically um about two three years ago there was a lot of spaces closing all at once and so there was a summit that a lot of organizations came together and started talking about this problem like how do people have access to space where what can be looked at as space and how do we yeah create some kind of registry um I know that the now nonprofit that was the drugstore has been talking about creating some kind of database like that, but there is nothing that I know of right now. You kind of just have to look around. Um, but Rebecca, if you put your email in here, I can send you some things this week of spaces that we know about that often send us um, listings when they have space available um, awesome. and put you in touch with those folks. So we do have our new studio spaces at Wonder, and we're also going to have one space here opening up January 1. That is um, $175 a month. It's about 170 square feet. Um, so it's about a dollar a square foot here. Um, and if you'd want to see that, I can um, email you the same email and let you know how to get okay. that rolling as well. That'd be great. Yeah, I'm in kind of a unique position that I don't live in Kansas City, but so I'm not surrounded by a bunch of artists, but I the main reason I would love to have a studio space in Kansas City is kind of for that community aspect. So it's less about the space and more for me, at least personally, being able to just at least have those organic interactions with other creatives so I can kind of like build my network and, you know, that kind of thing. And I'm imagining that most yeah, I'm imagining that most studio places that have like multiple studios in them, kind of that just happens organically, like living in an apartment building, you would meet the people that you, you know, roommate next to or whatever. But um, yeah, I guess any advice you would offer me um, about how to find those communities. This has been a great resource, obviously, but um, yeah. No, for sure. And something also I can include in that is um, which spaces are kind of like closed room locked door like there's some spaces that are like private spaces we have all of our spaces are kind of communal in a sense like they're all open to each other they are you know private to each person but still open and so i think that that really helps people kind of get out of their um or like into a comfort zone of chatting more and stuff like that instead of just going into a room and closing the door um there's advantages to both you know believe me um where are you in the greater area just to know kind of maybe what spaces might be more accessible to you as well yeah i'm an hour south of kansas city so the town okay. i'm in is called creighton missouri but um okay. so anything on the south side of kansas city would be i've been looking specifically at the crossroads just because i love that area and i do i have some clientele that are already there so it makes sense to kind of be in that area um but i'm 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 kind of open to anywhere that's south kc mid kc so thanks for being so accommodating was, i know this is a hyper specific question but i really appreciate your help no i mean that's why we're here um have you ever heard of inner urban art house i have heard of it yeah okay, they're in um, I'll make i just say because they're in overland park which might be a little bit closer to where you are um okay. let me i'm just going to go ahead and put their link in here right now perfect that's and i will one. send you my email Okay, good. Thank you. That's the one that I know of, like off the top of my head, that's the most out south, but I know that there's other ones that I'm just not thinking of right now. Um, but I'll take a little bit more brain time to share with you this coming okay. week. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for all your help. Definitely. I didn't, yeah, like, here, make sure you put your email in there. I didn't see it come through.
Perfect. Got it. Perfect. Thank you so much. Well, um, I think we're good here. Does anyone else have any questions or anything? Okay, cool. A little short and sweet. Um, oh, and Lisa Healy said inner urban would be a great option on this side of town. She's in Lalexa and they do have open studio days as well as paid studio spaces. So that's really awesome. I didn't know about that. So definitely look into them and reach out to um, I don't know who their studio manager is there, but I'm sure it has it on their website. Yeah, I will definitely look into that. Thank you, Lisa, oh. for popping in there. Yeah, thanks, Lisa. And um, I think we're good, guys. We're wrap up a little bit early this morning. So I hope you guys enjoy this sunshine. It is chilly and make it down to the QCSC gallery today for our pop up today if you can. There's a lot of really beautiful work um, and great little items for holiday presents. So hope to see you all soon and take care. Hi, thank you.